Hello, families. Welcome back to the FB First Family Ministry Podcast, where our goal is equipping families to navigate life with God's truth. Today on the podcast, we have Miss Sue Ellen, a well-known awesome lady in our church, and she's going to be helping us discuss the topic that we have for today. Let's get into it. Hey, families. Welcome back. I'm joined today with Pastor Jonathan, whoop, whoop. Pastor Gabe, and Miss Sue Ellen. Miss Sue Ellen has uh, been raised in our church here at FB First. Um, you have nine grandkids, seven kids, four kids in between the grandkids. Mm-hmm. Um, and so seven of your children, seven of your grandchildren are here in this church. Mm-hmm. And um, maybe tell us a little bit about your involvement. Okay. Um, yes, I was raised in this church. Um, my my husband and I were blessed with four daughters. We raised our daughters here in this church. Um, the situation now is we have seven grandchildren living here, two live in St. Simon's. Um, several are involved in the church school here, FBCA. Several are involved in um, Jack and Jill. I have the unique opportunity of working with um, in a life group, which is a Sunday school class with adults, married adults, with uh, growing children. Some some don't have children, but it's a co-ed class on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. We'd love for anyone to join us. <laughs> and then on Wednesday night, I have a preschool class. Um, at six o'clock that you're welcome to bring your preschoolers to and we have a blast with them so I have the unique opportunity of dealing with um, parents and their children that's so and, awesome um, walking you know uh, a life of faith with them that's wonderful and I know you also fill in a lot in the preschool classes on Sunday morning um, which is where this topic kind of came came about um, you and I were chatting briefly as I was picking up my four-year-old from your class and um, I don't really recall how we jumped into the topic so quickly but it was something we, we began talking talking about just material things. And um, I think clutter was one of them. Mm-hmm. And so that uh, really spawned us to, oh, well, that that actually would be something that people would really need to kind of hear about. So um, so we don't actually have a title for this podcast yet. We're yeah. going to record this and kind of see where that's going to go, because um, there's a lot of content here and a lot of uh, scriptural backing behind what we want to talk about. So we'll start out first with our, our verse that we always want to base, um, base our content here in scripture. So when thinking about and praying about this this topic, um, Matthew 6, 19 to 21 came to mind. Do not store up tre- for yourself treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Amen. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Mm. Mm. And that is such a fundamental verse here. Uh, the, the book of Matthew being, uh, there were actually quite a few ver- verses in the book of Matthew that were relevant to this. So we'll kind of throw those in as, as we go. Um, but the, really just teaching people what it means to be part of his kingdom and the kingdom of heaven. And in doing so, it touches on here on earth and, and how we should be living. So, um, I, yeah. Right, right. Well, and I, I wonder, you know, how many families sometimes like, um, and even myself, you know, I, I didn't realize until really, you know, even this conversation, how much the Bible talks about, uh, you know, I knew it talked about our possessions, but not as much about like, you know, how much we accumulate of our possessions, you know, what we, what we do in that way and, and how it relates to, to that. You know, I think life can get so busy sometimes and, and things can, can start to pile up. And, and so it's just interesting to see, you know, uh, how the Bible addresses such a, a practical issue, you know, and super excited to jump into talking about how we can apply this and everything, you know? Yeah. And I, th- I think the concept to ponder here is how to get my child to focus on their relationship with God rather than their relationship with material things. Um, start by asking yourself, what am I focused on? Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Which, right. by the way, it, it talks into the context of this verse, right? That to, to not lay up things on treasures on earth where ultimately you're giving ultimate value to those things rather than the right priority that you are to have. So the context of this verse sets the structure of what we should be exemplifying to our children, right? That the, the problem is not, hey, these things are bad, is if this is your main priority, it's wrong. Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Good point. So this topic is something we want to discuss today, um, consumerism being an issue mm. that every parent, every person is dealing with, whether believer or non-believer. Um, this is quite 
consumerism has quite literally consumed um, many of us beyond what we may even recognize. And, and how I can we think about it. There's like 70 holidays that are like, wait a minute, Donut Tuesday? What? Wait a minute. What are we talking about here? <laughs> yeah, totally. And there are people that don't even associate Easter with Jesus at all. It is right, literally right. about a bunny bringing chocolate. Think about that, right? And because it's just been taken over by consumerism. So how we spend our money dictates how we spend our time and often can reveal what's in our mm -hmm. hearts. And I mm -hmm. think that speaks um, volumes to what we want to talk about today. So we, we look for these material things to fill voids and in our relationships and, and in our hearts. Um, yet most of us know that there's no way to buy our way into heaven, although yeah. there are gospels in, out there that might teach us otherwise, but we know the truth. Um, and we're here to want to reveal the truth and, and enforce the truth with you through some principles here. Um, I think this, this topic came about, as I mentioned, just organically for us, and it fits in with the teaching that uh, Pastor Zach here in our church has actually been talking about. And so this has been... Um, we felt it was a great time in, in the springtime here to just talk about there are people, you know, spring cleaning and different things, but this is really getting to the root of the issue. And um, that was why we felt bringing, bringing Miss Sue Ellen on was great because you have experience. And I think you even mentioned um, this isn't something that you've always succeeded at, but now, you know, at this point in your life, we'll, we'll touch a little bit more about that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Ellen, I want to ask you as we're getting into this conversation, um, really, what is what is the issue? Because um, the, the thing at the end of the day is like, like Aaron said, you know, it's not, I mean, we have stuff and things and stuff and things. I mean, in and of themselves, the Bible never says, you know, thou shalt not have, you know, a ton of Easter eggs or thou shalt not have furniture, <laughs> furniture or yeah, anything in our house, you know, like, so, so what's the actual issue here that, that we're talking about? You know. well, well, actually, when you're talking about scripture, you know, the pastor said there's 800 verses on money in the Bible. There's actually 2,300 verses that have to do with our possessions wow. and money. Yes, yeah. that's a Howard Dayton um, wow. uh, number after going through the entire Bible. So I think the focus that we need to have is that everything is God's, mm. everything. You know, we, we receive everything. We don't create anything. And we have a creator who has gifted us. And so we are stewards, and we need to approach it that way, and we need to teach our children that way. Mm -hmm. That this, these things, mine is, is a real dangerous word. And in our little classroom, we say, no, this is all God's, this is God's house. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, we live in God's world. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, back to the practical part of it. I think there's very few women um, that I know or mothers or, or people who keep house. And I shouldn't say just women because men do that very well. Um, but that we don't deal with clutter. We spend a large part of our day dealing with the household possessions, our clothes, our food, you know, managing um, the appliances in our house, cleaning our house, trying to make it a safe environment for our children. And clutter can be a real issue. Mm. Things are a real issue when we're dealing with preschool or small things are issues. But um, I think what feeds into that are many things. And um, so consumerism is a real issue because we feel like if we have things, we feel better. You know, if it's in my house, I know I have it. Right. And um, consumerism is taking material things and elevating them because they make us feel better. And that's a real trap. And we know that as believers, like you said, you know, um, these things corrupt. These things are go away. These aren't, you know, we're not taking them to heaven with us. Right. Right. And so um, we well, want to... it's easy to get that narrow view, though, right? It is. And so I, I call them distractions. Yeah. You know, they're distractions. All of these things are distractions from our real goal, which is to bring God the glory and it's hard to do that when you're spending your whole day managing your possessions. And so I think it's a real trap for yeah. moms because we want our children to have things. But on the other hand, we don't want the things to become so important that we're missing the big issue, which is to teach our children the things they need to go through life. They're going to have things in their life and they're going to not have things in their life. They're going to, you know, in my own life, I've, I've had think times when I needed to pay down my debt. And then there's yeah. times when I've had plenty. And, and um, Paul talks beautifully about that. You know, I've been in low times mm. and I've been uh, in periods where I've had everything and I've learned to be content in all ways. Right. And we want to teach our children that. 
Mm. I that love that so much. Contentment mm-hmm. is a is a big one, it, specifically discontentment, and and that's something that is part of the root issue. But we'll get more into that. Yeah, no. Well, I was just going to even say, like in Philippians, because you know I, I love you know people will quote that verse. Uh, I can do all things through mm-hmm. Christ, which strengthens me. Um, and uh, sometimes we wrongly maybe apply that verse, you know, yeah. to like, man, I'm just gonna I'm gonna do this, and I can do it because I'm I'm gonna surf this massive twenty foot wave with just getting in the water. I've never surfed before. Right. And it's like, um, I'm going to do this through through Christ. But really that verse has direct correlation to what we're talking about here is like, what is the secret to contentment? The secret of contentment is that any circumstance that God brings us through, we can do that through him who strengthens us. Right. Mm -hmm. It's God that strengthens us, not me. It's not, not something of that I do. It's, it's, it's God strengthening me. Or things. Or things. Yeah. Or things. Or or things. Exactly. Exactly. And so I just, I think that's so, that's so cool that in, we have the opportunity to teach our kids. My dad um, was, he, he had the means by which to get us a ton of stuff growing up. He really did, but he didn't. He would restrict the things that he did give us. And, and I'm thinking about that as, as we're talking about this, you know, just as I think he would restrict the things he gave us, not because he didn't love us or anything like that, but because he was trying to teach us that, you know, you can do without this stuff. You can operate without this stuff and um, you don't have to have it in order to be happy. And, and you find your contentment in Christ. And as a kid, I'm like, no, I'm with that Lego set. Come on. Like, I'm seeing that thing. That looks really cool. I'm a big Star Wars fan. So it's like, mm-hmm. let's get that Star Wars Lego set. Um, but he's like, no, you got to save up. You gotta, okay. But that goes into it. I guess that goes. <laughs> I'm, I'm going yeah, off yeah. on a tangent on that. But, yeah, that's great. Um, you know, but l- let's let's get into this. What is the root? What is the root cause? What do you think are the root causes in consumerism? We talked a little bit about how, um, you know, maybe some discontentment can can be a part of that, you know, and and, and that can play into it. But, but what are some other things that you think have, have caused this problem? Well, some of it, I think, is uh, people who've had to do without, you know, poverty or when they didn't get their needs met when they were younger. And so when they, they feel better when they're able to, to meet their needs and to meet the needs of their children. Frequently, people who have been raised without getting what they wanted want to make their child's, um, you know, childhood different. So I think, you know, uh, a history um, has a lot to do with it. Childhood trauma might have something to do with it. But um, for, for a lot of people, it's just um, that cultural pressure to have, you know, to keep up with the Joneses, to have the newest car, to have the biggest house, to have the nicest TV, um, those things. Advertising plays into it. Um, and I think, too, especially in this present day, it's um, the whole thing of convenience. You know, we want everything to be convenient. We want it our way. We want it now. We want it. We've got credit. We want to deliver to our door. You know, it's just all the obstacles. You know, I grew up here in Fernandina. We didn't have a lot of big department stores. We had some cool ones downtown, Moores and Allen's. Mm. Which, uh, that's a whole other story. But, um, you know, you had to drive to Jacksonville to really buy a lot of cool stuff that, you know, was, was yeah. current. Right. And um, th- those obstacles are gone. Yeah. You can get anything anytime. And I find it interesting, as you say, is that everything is so convenient now. It's mm-hmm. so easily mm-hmm. uh, accessible that things that we really wouldn't otherwise get, just because it's there, we feel like, oh, well, it's there. I can get it, so why not? Yeah. Right. And I, I'll say just... And I can of, get 12% AP. I, I get right. financing. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> but it's 50% off. What yeah. do you need, right? Um, and for me, it is, I've been in situations where uh, there's something that I want. And I, I have the opportunity to go get it, but I have tried to train myself or discipline myself in a rhythm of let, it, let time dictate, do you really need it? Because oftentimes I may need it at that moment because I want a better sound system. I want a better TV. But when time passes by, I realize, man, I barely watch TV. So mm. why do I willing to spend $2,000 on a TV? I, that's a lot. I, just a number from my head. Um, <laughs> right, but but right. that, sense, that sense of everything being so conveniently there mm-hmm. that we feel like, well, if it's there and it's 50% off, then why should I get it? And next thing you know, you spend some money in something that you never even used in the first place. Mm. I think it's important, too, to not take the modern conveniences all on the the negative side, right? Mm-hmm. So there's a, a, let's say you need, you do have a need. There's a, a great advantage to being able to shop 
and find better deals or compare um, and contrast different products and and be good stewards of your if you're going to spend money on something find you know do it in a responsible way um, there's also for me I dread taking children into the grocery store as probably most of you do. Um, it's challenging and there are a lot of reasons why, but, but, um, ordering groceries online and pickup is really helpful for me because I can do it on my own time. And I also am being, I can stick to my list much better than if I'm just in store grabbing things that are there or shopping those sales. So using the, the modern conveniences in a, in an efficient way, to help you accomplish your goal, which is to not spend frivolously and needlessly. We were talking, joking about um, no slam on Target, but I just won't go in that store. I can't. I, I know that there's too much temptation in that <laughs> store. So I just don't, I don't ever need anything in Target. I'm not going in there. Um, and I know that might hurt some of your feelings or, or might really make you um, feel inward about that. But um, <laughs> I just, that's a store I know that I have a hard time in. Um, particularly, you know, you talked a little bit about cultural pressure and keeping up with people. Comparison steals joy. And you're Absolutely. thinking about what you don't have instead of what you do have. Um, one of the scriptures that spoke to me when we were talking, researching this topic was Galatians 1.10 for, am, am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not saying, you know, we should all be scrutinizing every single purchase to the point where it's robbing you of joy and time with your family because you're so lamenting over these decisions. But you, we really should be thinking about being good stewards of our of our. Um, financial security and, and what we have been given. We know we've been, you know, listening to that over the past couple of weeks that it's, um, it's just really important and I to think be our, intentional. Yeah. And I think our kids have learned the convenience of getting stuff, um, because they, they're growing up in a culture where they, you know, you don't have to go. So when I, even when I grew up, like, like we would go to, to JC Penney's or something to get our pictures taken. We would, you know, like we didn't have a photographer come to us. You know, we had to go to the department, the, the mall to go. I remember on Easter, the week before Easter Sunday, we would go to the mall and we would go and pick out like different outfits and stuff like that. The kids, these, I mean, you can just go online, you know, to Sheen or whatever, you know, and just our Amazon or whatever it is and just be like, oh, let me, let me get one of those. And, oh, one of those and one of those. And I'll have it to my house in two days. It's like, man, the convenience of that's so easy. And our kids realize that convenience. They realize that ease that they can just, I mean, you just click the button, right? And just get it. I, I remember a funny story when I was growing up, my mom told me that there was a kid uh, or a mom who left eBay open on her computer. Um, and her like four-year-old child was, you know, uh, playing around on the computer and, and, and spent like $30,000 <laughs> Thirty thousand dollars bid. 30, I mean, she got whatever she <laughs> bidded for, but the, just thirty thousand dollars. But the ease that our kids just—they just understand this. They get this, you know. Oh, I click the button, and then it comes to me, you know. Um, and in credit card, I mean, just swipe the card, and there we go. Boom, there it is. Well, I think you know, y'all hit on a couple topics that really mean a lot to me, and one of them is discipline. You mm. said you have to discipline yourself, and that your kids need to see. You know, they need to see. You know, yeah, I'd like to have that. You know, take them. And, and I appreciate what you say about the grocery store, but I love taking my grandkids to the grocery store. I was the first person to take two of them because they had never been because mm. of they were born during COVID. And they go in there and they see everything and they want to touch everything and do everything. But this is a great opportunity mm. because this is the world. This is what you're going to see. You're going to see all kinds of things. You can't have all those things. No, mm. All those things yeah. are not good for you. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to pick out the best things you know, for you, for your body, to put in your body and to put in our cart and to take home and to be part of our life, even as a simple way, you know? Yeah, you see all that candy. That's not good for you. Yeah. You know, it's a great training opportunity yeah. to take them. And it teaches that, you know, you can tell them, you know, that's my favorite ice cream right there, but I'm not going to take it. I'm not going to buy that. I'm going to go over here and buy something that's better for me. You know, yeah. it's just a great opportunity to teach. So, and, and the other thing you talked about, which is wants versus needs, I mean, huge. We just went through this big discussion, my husband and I, about something, a purchase. And he says, and yesterday he just goes, you know, that's just a want, which was awesome because we have a great pastor. <laughs> 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 and Todd's not sleeping, mm -hmm. Pastor Zach. He is listening. <laughs> um, but I think, you know, if you're sitting under good teaching, you're going to hear those things and they're going to impact your life even when you're in your 60s. And it's so helpful to, uh, as we change our, our worldview, because ultimately what you're having to do, you know, going back to the text in Matthew 6, verse 21, the, the goal, the, the things are not bad. 
But when this becomes the treasure, when this becomes your identity, your, what defines yeah. you as a human, as a person, that's a problem, right? Yeah. And, and, and I think it's, it's so helpful for uh, one of the things that I, I always try to tell my kids is, man, if I spend all my time looking around, I don't get to enjoy what God has already given me. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it, this is a helpful reminder for all of us to make sure that, hey, I, I know everything is easily accessible, but let's take this time to see what God has already blessed us with. Because by the fact that we have breath upon our lungs, mm -hmm. it is a gift that we often kind of disregard in our lives because it is it's given to us every single morning. But that itself is a gift of God. So I, I think there's a level here where, where as we dig into Scripture, our worldview has to change and, and put our gospel lenses into how we see everything uh, that will all hopefully help everything else, right? So. And I think it's also important to note that the the idea of um, consumerism doesn't necessarily mean to be need that mm -hmm. you're going out and spending money on things. You could be collecting things on the free marketplace or picking up stuff, you know, that people are tossing out or whatever because of that scarcity mindset that people feel like, well, it's here. Someone's giving it away. I should take it. And so when we talk about clutter, clutter can be things that you paid for, things that, you know, were given to you. You're taking on bags and bags of hand-me-downs for your kids because they're going to grow into that size eventually. But now what's happened is your, your home is being filled with stuff and that stuff will take up your time. That stuff, I, I invite remember having um I kind of en ended up on this like decluttering journey or whatever about when my daughter was tiny about five years ago um she was a baby and and my old I had an older daughter and I remember very vividly coming to this point of like a breaking point on Christmas morning and uh, we always had a big Christmas growing up like lots of presents and you know that was uh just our way of celebrating the holiday and so that's what I wanted to give my kids and um I remember at the end of all of the gifts being opened and looking around and seeing all of the, I mean, we did a good job cleaning up as we went, but there was still like bags of, of, tra of, um, wrapping paper and of wrap, like recycle material. And I just, I w had to go outside and I, I started sobbing and I'm like, what is all this stuff for? Some of it we didn't even open yet. We didn't open the packages and I t packed them back up in my car. And I went and I donated them because I'm like, I realized my kids don't need all of this stuff to know they are loved. This is before our family was rooted in faith. Mm -hmm. And this was just, I knew that the purpose of this holiday was not what we were doing. Mm -hmm. And it was such a profound moment for me in my motherhood, realizing what am I teaching my kids? I, I realize I'm mimicking what I thought was important. And, you know, that was just a missed opportunity to show them love and time and maybe go bless another family mm. instead. And so as we're looking around our house and we're seeing all these things that we're not using and this clutter that we're, <coughs> you know, maybe literally walking around or having to clean around or is just filling rooms of our house for no reason, Think of how we can bless other families in those ways and, and, you know, giving those things away, not to put clutter in someone else's home, but if you're having an appliance, a small appliance or something you're not using, maybe another family who doesn't have a stove or a cooktop could use mm. that air fryer. I think you used that example in our, in our conversation mm. before we got started, but, um, wow, it's just what a good way to show your kids. We are, you know, these are things that are still good. They're not, um, you know, we're no longer utilizing them. Let's pass them on. And really, I find that my kids started actually using and playing with, for toys, for example, their things when they had less. Because when it, there's too much, it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming for them to think about, well, what do I choose? I don't know. And, and mm, their yeah. the brains just get so overloaded. So thinking about that. <laughs> well, it's like when we were talking earlier, excuse me, um, you know, th think back on your childhood. You might remember one or two toys that you had. But your memories are mainly about times with your family. Hmm. You know, I grew up, had the blessing of growing up right on South Fletcher. And my times that I remember as a child are playing on the beach with my brothers and my mother and um, picnics on the beach and vacations to visit family. Um, things like that are what build your family and builds um, your relationships. It's not about the toys that I was given. I can't, I, I don't honestly remember 
many of the toys I received on Christmas morning. So think about that when you're yeah. thinking about raising your children. I love the vacations things, mm-hmm. you know, thinking about standing in line in Disney World for 45 minutes to see a made up princess. <laughs> you know, I mean, that that's probably not something my daughter, we, we took her once. That was the one when she was really tiny and that was enough. I mean, no hate on Disney fans, but that was, you know, I, we, I think we kind of told ourselves that was that was enough. Um, well, that's a real study was done, which what um, people remember and, of their childhood, and it's time outdoors and time on family vacations. Hmm. Wow. So it, that's true. Yeah. No, go ahead. Go ahead, bud. I, I was going to say it's, it's so interesting, the science as well behind it, because um, uh, um, there's a study out there, can, I don't know which one it is, uh, that correlates uh, anxiety and stress with having multiple choices. That it's actually yeah. better for the human mind to have less choices because they feel less pressured to make the wrong choice. And, and the study specifically talks about ice cream, which now I want ice cream. Um, but he said it was it was better you need ice cream. That's right. I, that's right. Yes, I, I need that. Um, it is better to have two different flavors to choose from because I feel less pressure that I'm going to make the wrong choice and that would then bring anxiety and stress upon my life rather than having 16 different choices and now I have to think through, do I really want this one? Do I want this one? And then you get the wrong one and you realize, mm-hmm. oh, I'm, I'm guilty. Mm-hmm. I, I got re- regret. Um, so I, I wonder if there's a similar uh, reality here for when it comes to stuff is, uh, you know, we get that one thing that we, are, we so thought we wanted and when we get it, we realize it didn't satisfy hmm. the need that we really had in our lives. Yeah. And then we are left with looking to the side, although we just spend all this resource that has been blessed before us. Hmm. And I think, once again, just bringing back to the, this to the gospel lens of we're trying to fill a void that can only be filled with one thing. And that is with our relationship with Jesus Christ. Hmm. And, and no matter how, either you're poor or, or financially blessed, you're you're gonna be in this circular rhythm of trying to figure out: Do I want this? Do I need it? Do I want this? And it's like, well, first make sure you're filling the real void that you need, and that is the gospel mm, of Jesus Christ so upon good. your life. Yeah, so, the gospel is king. I think too, it goes back to Eve. Mm. You know, I'm not gonna get what I want. So I'm going to grab after it. I'm going to get it for myself. You can have everything. It's unbelief. It is rooted to me. And I'm. And I used to say I'm going to. I'm going to get her when I get there. But then I realized I am. I (laughs) am. Amen. We we are. And yeah, yeah, Yeah. I want to get it for myself. Get out of the way. Excuse me, husband. Mm -hmm. I'm going to grab it for myself. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's rooted in unbelief. Mm. And um, it just. I think so. So many people feel, you know, that they need something to validate them. And, yeah. and you're right; it should be their child of the king. And going back to what Gabe said, PBS in North Carolina reports that the average human makes thirty five thousand decisions in a day. Thirty five thousand decisions. If that's decisions. true, mothers make seventy thousand. <laughs> Maybe a hundred thousand. Thank you, Aaron. Yes. Yes. Multiplied by the number of children you have. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> yep. And the number of cars in your driveway. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, and, and that's and that's exactly what happened. You know, our kids get overloaded with thirty five thousand decisions plus, and then if we multiply that by the toys and the everything, you know, it just complicates it more. And um, what is the one thing we want our kids focused on mm-hmm. out of everything is the gospel, and that's the one decision of those thirty five thousand decisions that we want them to make right. Because if they can hold fast to the gospel, if they can hold fast to the truth of God's word, if they're not worried about I got to choose all those things, no, it's it's the gospel. That's the truth. That's the decision. Um, if we're focusing on that, that's I mean that's the main one. And so. that and that goes back to just intentionality, right? Mm-hmm. Being intentional in our decisions. And what, what do those decisions mean? Are they right. bringing us closer to God or are they bringing us farther from God? And we, we can remember that and maybe even verbalize that around your children. You might sound like a crazy person and they might think you're crazy. Um, but as you, as you grow older, as they grow older, they'll realize they'll start to do that too. I mean, my, my children have mimicked me in my best times and in my worst moments. And I tell you, you know, um, both I remember. So, mm-hmm. I, And I think as well, 
as, as Pastor Mordock, I call him Pastor Mordock, sorry. Um, <laughs> but I, I think about, man, what do we value? Because I, I think oftentimes, you know, when, when I hear the, the text talk about treasures, and do we understand the treasure that we do have as, as a redeemed child wow. of God? Wow. Um, because if we understand the weight of what has been given to us, then everything else seems worthless, right? Because all that we need, we already have been given to us through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We have been, been given this incredible gift that nobody could have attained themselves. And when we value that and understand the value that it has upon our lives, then everything else is like, do I really need all this stuff? Because the one thing that I needed that I couldn't get myself, but the way it has already been given to me, now everything else that I do have, it's just an extra gift. It's extra extra sprinkles, like someone likes to call it, right? <laughs> uh, and, and we get to enjoy those things. But again, let's have a right priority list in our lives of what is really valuable in our lives compared to what is just a blessing that we get to enjoy it as an extra. And it mm-hmm. reminds me as, of a hymn that we sung growing up, um, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Oh. It says, Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, mm-hmm. and the things of this earth will go strangely dim in the light of his gro- glory and grace. Come on. Every it, The writer of that had this in his mind. I, I could only imagine. He's like, listen, you get all this stuff in the world, but if you turn your eyes on Jesus... Mm-hmm. Everything else is going to go dim mm-hmm. in that beauty mm-hmm. and in that glory and in that splendor. Amen. Wow. I love it. Yeah, that's great. The um, the and it's the gift that keeps on giving because mm-hmm. yeah. we have daily mercies and daily grace. Mm-hmm. You know, once salvation is in that two million decisions over a lifetime, that thirty-five thousand or whatever a day, and goes on and on and on. You know, the one decision they have to make in all of that is to accept Christ as their Savior. But after that, we have such grace and mercy and we have such an abundant life we don't we we can trust him that mm-hmm. unbelief should be gone of course we have to work on that sometimes some of us mm-hmm. yeah. because we want to grab things for ourselves and sustain ourselves and provide for our family when god's already promised us that we don't need to worry the lilies of the field and the you know his eyes on the sparrow you know we just have to remember that we have everything we need mm. that's so good that's so good mm-hmm. So let's, I mean, we've, we've been at the 35,000 view. Mm-hmm. Um, let's really zone in on this. Um, what does this mean for our families? Hey, what does this mean for our people? You know, really applicationally, what, what, what are some steps that I can take, that Kaylee and I can take? What are some steps that our parents can take in order to not have, uh, sorry, I'm going to phrase this in a different way. What is a way that they can have a positive gospel focus in, in a positive treasure focus that not on this kingdom, but on our heavenly kingdom? How can, how can we do that practically? What are some steps? Well, um, I've shared with Aaron, you know, that my life experience, I'm a little, a, a lapper five ahead of y'all. And I've had to deal with some situations where we've dealt with things you know, material possessions that have been left behind. I've had children go to college, had to clean out their closet. I've had children get married, had to clean out their rooms. I've had people in my family relocate, we had to clean out their house. My parents have passed, I had to clean out all their stuff. So I've dealt with left behind items and you have to make a decision when you're doing that, is this have value or does this not have value, financial value, does it have emotional value? And I think that's what we need to think before we put things into our house. Mm -hmm. You know, is this gonna enhance our our family life, is it just something convenient? Is it something we really need 10 years from now? Am I gonna appreciate this? Even 50 years from now when my child is dealing with cleaning up my house, did I really need this? Is this something really of value? Is it sentimental value? And will my children's children still think that? Mm. And so we need to, before we purchase things, we need to be thinking proactively, is this important? And then, you know, I think you can create things that are of, of benefit. Um, You know, I did a little family book with all my parents' stuff. I made a little book and took pictures of the stuff. I got rid of the stuff, but I took pictures of it. That's such a great way to keep, yes. I love that. Little Snapchat book told the story of my parents and what they went through and how they were married and then took pictures of different things. And then I was able to let go of them. You know, we need and bless someone else with some of the things. And and when you do it that way, you can tell the story about the thing. Yeah. Along with the thing without having the thing. Absolutely. <laughs> That's so great. Because that yeah. thing is going to rest and corrupt and go away. I do that with my kids' artwork, mm-hmm. by the way, mm-hmm. and their projects. <laughs> Take a picture, write down what it is, move on. Good, I can't good idea. keep bins of art projects. Great. They're way too creative. Move on. Code yes. word for, oh, wait, I can't say it. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, it, it, it's, it's, it's so awesome to, to also hear, um, by, by the way, that idea, I never heard of it. And now I'm thinking through my own stuff and see how I can do that as a legacy for my own children, for our own stuff. You know, things that maybe we enjoyed four years ago that right now just doesn't fit into our family rhythms. And maybe we can do something with it, which is not only bless somebody else, but we can then hold on to the memory of it mm -hmm. to not look back uh, as, a, oh, I missed that, but in remembrance, right? Mm -hmm. Remembering, look how good we also were blessed back then. Look how, how faithful the Father has been, not only mm -hmm. now where we are, but where we actually have also have been. Yeah, mm -hmm. funny story. When we were living on the beach, my dad had a one of the first SUVs. It was called a Vauxhall, but it could go down on the beach. And so, you know, to reliving our childhood, I was thinking, I wonder what happened to that Vauxhall? I'm sure it is rust somewhere, but I found a picture of a Vauxhall and I put it in there for my brother. I said, do you remember how much fun we had with wow. this thing? <laughs> and it was a thing, but it was more than that. It was a memory. Yeah. So yeah, in a small way, that kind of is the picture of what I'm talking about. You remember yeah. the thing and what joy it brought and what the family memories are, yeah. but it was a thing and it's gone. And think about if someone had had to hold on to that all these years, that would have uh -huh. taken up footprint of space. I mean, there are people that literally pay for storage units of stuff that no one wants to go in or go through, but it's there because no one wants to throw it out. Mm -hmm. And and I think that that's the trap that we get into is where, well, we already bought this. We spent hard-earned money on it. We're going to keep it. No, start today. Get rid of the stuff. Get, you know, donate. Don't get caught up in trying to sell every little thing. Um, certainly, if there's significant value and someone else is willing to purchase it, Quickly try to make it sale and get out of your house, fine. But you also, if you have the opportunity to bless someone else with it, just give it away. Um, there are, you know, groups on online that you can, you know, find people that need stuff um, or take it to charitable organizations, drop it off. I mean, there are ways to easily get rid of your stuff. And from that, you you kind of come clean into now thinking about intentionally pr your your purchases and what else you're bringing into your house and, and into your your life. So talking about stuff that no longer serves you, I mean, it's time to, to let that stuff go. I think mm -hmm. being good examples for our children, that they don't need material things necessarily um, to find joy in their hearts. Um, you mentioned the word legacy, and that's kind of how I wanted to, to end things was really thinking about what do you want to leave to your children? Do you yeah. want to leave yeah. an inheritance of money and things? Or yeah. do you want to leave a legacy, right. a spiritual legacy mm -hmm. that will last for generation? Because Come the on. money will go. The money will be spent. The money, unfortunately, more often than not, tears apart the family that's left mm. because of hurt feelings and misunderstandings or surprises in someone's will. That's something that becomes a hindrance for families growing together and will rip families apart. So, yeah. Well, I think of, you know, the disciples and Jesus. How much stuff did they carry around? What did they leave? What's their legacy? Amen. How about that? Mm -hmm. Amen. And nothing. Mm -hmm. Very few possessions and left a legacy that, you know, and we're one still thing, talking about. One thing with that, and this will be another podcast episode for another time, but the disciples left their story and that was awesome. Mm -hmm. And think about, you know, I think especially in our culture, we can undervalue journaling and writing our story and what we went through and how God has delivered us. And I've heard so many people say that like, man, you know, when my parents passed, I found their journal and I read through it and I saw, man, my mom and dad were going through the same thing that me and my husband are going through right now, or me and my spouse are going through right now. Mm -hmm. And that, that speaks to them. I mean, leaving that, that writing, the, the oral tradition of teaching and, and not only just like while they're still alive, like, Hey, here's how you need to do this. But like, you know, even after they're past reading that journal and saying, wow, you know, that is amazing. You know, that they went through that and they, they, they documented that and they, you know, I'm able to relate to that. And I didn't even know mom and dad were going through that when we were kids, but man, like they did and, and they got through it and, and they were faithful. And man, I, I think I can do that and be faithful to God and God will be faithful to me, you know, and seeing those stories. That's so great. I have not, we have not done that. Um, what I did do is when my girls were little, I actually started a, um, I, my handwriting is like a four-year-old's, so I type really fast and well. So I started an online journal for them. It's actually a Google Docs that I put in an email account <laughs> for them. But anyway, and I just periodically will go in and just write to them. That's and awesome. so now they have this, you know, pages long. It's nothing formal or fancy, but it's like just words to them because my, um, I actually lost my mom, um, 11 years ago. And that's one thing that I miss is just not having 
and any kind, you know, forget material possessions. Um, we didn't have much and it wasn't a whole lot of things left behind. Um, but I, I wish I had more of her spirit mm. and her, her stories and all of that. So if we can spend our time more, you know, building memories, writing down memories, that's so much more of a treasure mm. to your children and your loved ones than anything you can buy in a store. Exactly. And we know Jesus has already paved the way for us. You know, we just need to follow that path. That's right. Yeah. And, and parents, what, what we want to do with this, with the podcast and really with this conversation is we don't want to guilt trip anybody. Uh, we do want to point people to scripture. And if the Holy Spirit works through that in, in convicting you about certain things, then praise God, because he, first of all, then you know you're assured of your salvation by the way. Amen. But then uh, we pray that this will be a, an opportunity for self-assessment to have have a gospel conversation with your spouse, with your children, with yourself and and think, man, are, are is there anything that I have that can be a blessing to somebody else? Because I know in my own life, man, there's so many people who have been a blessing to me because they self-assess about the things they did have and say, you know what? I don't really need this. And they didn't even know how much we did need that. Um, so God will use that in wonderful ways for not only you to bless somebody else, but God will bless you through those avenues as well. But but our prayer is that ultimately you take your eyes away maybe from the things that this world pushes and that you will put your eyes on the one thing that really matters, the true treasure that all of us have been given, mm. and that is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So that is our prayer for you, prayer for all of our families, that we will exemplify that legacy and the rhythm. Um, and again, we are praying for you. If there's any questions you may have concerning the podcast or anything else, please feel free to email us. Uh, we would love to uh, get in connection with you. And Miss Sue Ellen, thank you so much Pleasure. for mm. your wisdom, because I, I took notes and I'm ready to apply some of these <laughs> things. Uh, guys, thank you so much for, for this awesome conversation. I pray that it will be a benefit Absolutely. Not only to us. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, make sure you share. If you found this video helpful, make sure you share this um, on your social media platforms. Maybe there's a family member um, that you don't even know is asking these questions, and, and this conversation would be helpful for them. If you do, like Gabe said, have any other questions, feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to host your question on one of our podcasts. That's what we're here to do is partner with you uh, to equip you with God's truth to navigate life. Hey, we love you, families. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Peace. Yeah.